So here's where we left off at the end of episode one. I have made a successful walk down this sidewalk. Um, I have auto-tracked uh, the, the little piece of paper stuck to my sleeve here. I've got myself some axes and I've got myself a distance measure. And when I did this auto tracker, this control shift click on the little uh, piece of paper on my sleeve, I got this graph out automatically. I didn't have to do anything to create it. It's automatically there in the tracker window. What I want to spend this episode looking at is what we can do with this graph, some of the basic analysis uh, that we can do. So this by default is a graph of the horizontal position X versus time. We'll get into vertical position later. Right now we're on the horizontal position. And what you notice about this graph is that it's pretty linear. It's, a, it's pretty much a straight line going from the beginning to the end because I was walking at a pretty constant velocity. I was not speeding up or slowing down. And even if I was, you can't really speed up indefinitely. The human body has to, to top out at a, at a velocity at some point. And so what I'd like to do is take a look at this graph and uh, see what we can get out of it. Since it's a line, we can calculate a slope from it. So to get a slope, we need two points. So let's get a point a little bit later on here. Um, let's say right about here. Uh, so, and as I scroll this with the scrub bar here, you can see the, the gray square in the graph moving so that whatever point I'm at in the movie here is the point that's highlighted over here. So at this moment, we're at an X of 7.235. So let's go over to our calculator here, put in 7.235. Now that's just, that's not just a number, that's 7.235 meters. So we'll put meters on that. We're gonna need to subtract from that the initial meters or, or, or a meter point from earlier. So let's say question mark meters. And so to get the slope, we need to do the rise over the run. We need to do the change in X over the change in T. So we'll put this in parentheses so that it goes in our numerator and we'll say divide by, and now I need my change in T. So look at my T value here. I've got a 5.964 seconds. And we'll need to subtract from that an earlier value of seconds. And so we're calling this the final position and final time. It's not really final over here, but since the slope is consistent throughout, all I need to do is pick two data points and I can get the slope off of here. So let's click and drag this back a little bit. Again, you can see the gray box moving in the graph as we slide back. And let's go with an earlier point. Uh, let's say right here is fine. Go back over to my calculator here. Let's see, my, uh, my earlier position measurement is a 1.350. So I've got meters minus meters on top. On the bottom, I'll have a 1.133 seconds. So this is seconds minus seconds on the bottom. It's important to keep your units on a calculation because you can't add and subtract meters and seconds, right? I can't have so many meters minus so many seconds. It doesn't make any physical sense. And the nice thing about using Google as a calculator is that Google will keep track of your units for you. So when I have meters and meters, Google knows that that produces a meters. When I have seconds and seconds, Google knows that produces a seconds. When I have meters divided by seconds, Google knows that that becomes a meter per second like it has right here. So if you use Google as a calculator, you can write out your numbers and your units together and Google will do everything for you right here. And so what I get from this is that the slope of this graph is a 1.2 meters per second. Now I'm not gonna bother with the rest of these digits because my measurements are not that accurate, right? If I were to compare this to a radar gun of my speed, I have no confidence that any, any of the rest of these decimal places are gonna match up. I'm not even really sure that the two is gonna match up. I'm pretty sure the one will. I'm pretty sure I was going at one point something meters per second, partly because average human walking speed is about one meter per second. And I tend to walk a little bit faster than the average human. Um, so mine is probably about 1.2, but if a, if a radar gun measured me at 1.1, I wouldn't feel like this was a wrong calculation. But if I quoted this out to 10 decimal places, uh, you know, then I'm inviting myself to be disagreed with later. So usually, you know, just a couple of, of, of digits is fine. So we'll, we'll call this a 1.2 here. We're gonna keep that in mind when we move along. Uh, but basically that means when I have this graph here, it's got a slope of about 1.2. And I could double check that by calculating the slope between many, many pairs of points. Uh, but we'll have a more accurate way of doing that in a future video. This is just a quick and easy way to get my velocity off of this graph. 
Now this, of course, like I mentioned earlier, is just the horizontal position. It doesn't tell me anything about the vertical position. If I wanted to see the vertical position, I could click on this uh, axis label and it will show me a whole bunch of stuff that I can graph. This is everything you could possibly need in an intro physics class. And you can even define your own quantity that you want to graph, which we will look at in a future video. For right now, I'm just gonna click on this Y here. And when I look at this, I see that my Y position was actually changing. And that actually doesn't surprise me very much because if I watch, if I watch my, my walking pattern here, you know, I'm, I'm not a, a, a block of stone. I do swing my arms, you know, uh, moving forward. So it does swing up and down a little bit. You can even see that in the trail here. So that doesn't surprise me at all. The main difference, when you look at this Y, you wanna look at the scale up here. So this scale times 10 to the minus two tells me that all these numbers here are really being multiplied by 10 to the minus two. So my, so my vertical distance is only going uh, from about negative three centimeters up to about six centimeters. So it's really not changing by that much. Uh, there is a little bit of an upward trend on this, probably means I didn't have my axis quite exactly parallel to the ground, but that's okay. Uh, if I go back to the X, you don't see that times 10 to the minus two because I moved a total of eight point something meters, maybe eight point, uh, looks like 8.49 meters um, uh, going from beginning to end. And so it doesn't, it's not really fair to say that my Y movement was all that big. Now I pointed out you can change the vertical axis. You can also change the horizontal axis to be anything you want. Usually you want the horizontal axis to be time, so that's why it's the default. But I could, for example, change this to X and I would have my Y versus my X here. And that's actually the same thing as the trajectory that I follow in the movie. So if I follow the graph and the movie together now, this little pattern of dots will match this pattern of dots. It's just this pattern of dots is zoomed in more, right? So the vertical and the horizontal are not uh, are not quite to scale with each other, but it should follow the same shape, the same up and down, but forward shape, which is pretty cool. Now, again, there's not much interesting happening in the vertical direction in this video, because I'm just walking forward. We will take a look at more interesting vertical motion stuff in a future video and combining vertical and horizontal motion. What I wanna look at next is how we can watch the velocity. So if I click on here, one of my options is VX, velocity X component. This means it's the piece of the velocity uh, that measures how much or how quickly I'm moving forward. So let's click on this. And what you notice, this one's going up and down again because you know I, I don't move with a, with a constant velocity. But again, look at the scale, look at the vertical scale. We're going from about 0.9 meters per second to about 1.4 meters per second. That's not changing by that much. That's not that great of a variation. If you really want to see uh, you know, how little of a change that is, I can go down here and change the minimum. So see whenever I hover my mouse over this little corner of the graph, it gives me the minimum value on the Y. I could change this to a zero, press enter, and it deactivates this little auto checkbox. And so this is comparing my velocity with zero, which is really what I'm probably more interested in. Oh, I also need to change this X back to time. There we go. So now we've got VX versus time. VX versus position is interesting too. We'll look at that in a future video, but for right now, we'll just look at VX versus time. Um, and you see my velocity is pretty flat. My velocity is, is relatively constant, right? It varies a little bit. Again, I'm human, I can't make myself go at, a, at an exactly constant velocity. So this is pretty good. And in fact, what you notice is this is wobbling a little bit. It's oscillating up and down and it's oscillating up and down around 1.2. Gee, that number is familiar. I come back over here and I just remember that my earlier calculation of my velocity was 1.2. So there's really two different ways you can get your velocity off of this little experiment. Uh, let me get these both on the same screen. There we go. Um, I can calculate it using rise over run, the slope formula, I get out about a 1.2, or I can graph my velocity versus time, and I get an average of about 1.2 meters per second. Again, uh, a tracker, much like Google, will keep track of your units for you. So this thing tells me that it's in meters per second, this tells me it's in meters per second. So I know that this 1.2 is actually the same as this 1.2 because it's a 1.2 meters per second in both cases. So that's two easy, simple ways to get your velocity out of a graph. Uh, in a future episode, we'll go over uh, 
a, a way to get your velocity more accurately, but I want you to get more familiar with Tracker first. So I want you to try this little experiment out first before we move on to more in-depth analyses. Now, one other thing I can look at, if I'm moving with constant velocity, then that means that my acceleration should be zero because acceleration is the rate of change of the velocity. And if the velocity is basically staying constant, then my acceleration should basically be zero. So let's try one more graph. Let's go down to our acceleration in the X direction. And you look at this and say, oh, the acceleration's going up and down. It's not zero like promised. Well, but you look at it, it's oscillating. What is it oscillating around? It's oscillating around zero. So every time it leaps up to two meters per second squared, when I'm trying to catch up with my intended velocity, it also has a corresponding points that dips down to two, negative two meters per second squared. So those two kind of cancel each other out in terms of a... Uh, in terms of an average. Um, again, you could change the axis on this to, to show yourself that it's pretty flat. So uh, on Earth, we like to compare ex accelerations to the acceleration due to gravity, 9.8, the strength of our gravitational field. That's one G if you're accustomed to thinking in terms of G forces. So if I compare that with a 9.8 and a negative 9.8, then I see that my acceleration is pretty flat around zero, right? It's not trending up or it's not trending down. It's definitely uh, oscillating around zero. So again, further evidence that I was moving at pretty constant velocity like I had intended to. So in this video, we've taken a look at examining position, velocity, and acceleration uh, in a simple case of constant velocity motion. Uh, so you should be able to do an activity like this after watching this video. In the next episode, we're going to look at how to handle multiple moving objects in a video. So uh, for example, in this video, there's a squirrel jumping up onto the tree. What if I wanted to track the squirrel along with, uh, along with myself? Uh, we're going to do a collision activity so that we have to keep track of two carts in motion and we'll see how a Tracker keeps track of two objects as easily as, uh, as it watches one. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.